for this topic, we find it best to bring in Alan Dershowitz. He might be the foremost expert on constitutional law in the world, professor emeritus of Harvard Law School. Professor, good to see you. Thank you for coming on. I know you've had this conversation before, but it, it seems to be picking up steam. Can you talk a little bit about what you heard from Congressman Schiff, the 14th Amendment, Section 3? How could these groups apply this to Trump? This is a national movement. It will spread all over the country. It is the primary effort directed at getting Trump. As you know, I wrote a book called Get Trump, looking at all the efforts uh, through criminal prosecutions and through the 14th Amendment. This is the most serious challenge because it requires no adjudication. As uh, Adam Schiff and his mentor, Professor Lawrence Tribe, uh, argue, it's self-enforcing. That means if you just think that he engaged in rebellion or insurrection, then it's true. There's no process. This is also a way of circumventing the impeachment provisions. Uh, this is not a disqualification for running for office. The 14th Amendment says no person shall be a senator, a governor, a president, a mayor, a city councilor, shall be. So it's a way of impeaching and removing. Take, for example, the mayor of San Francisco. Can he now be impeached for leading an insurrection uh, based on the fact that they're a sanctuary city? Or could President Biden be impeached on the ground that by allowing uh, uh, people to come over the border, he has engaged in a kind of insurrection? There's no definition. These are absurd. These are absurd applications of the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was clearly intended to prevent people who fought in the Civil War against the Union from serving in office. Now, Donald Trump's old, but he is not old enough to have served in the Civil War. And so this amendment is totally inapplicable to him. We have an impeachment provision. We have a 25th Amendment. We have other ways of disqualifying presidents, but this is not one of them. This is clearly designed to circumvent the Constitution, and it should be fought at every turn. I have a constitutional right to vote against Donald Trump for the third time, as you have a constitutional right to vote for him. And these elitists should not be able to deny us our constitutional right to vote. This is the most undemocratic McCarthyite tactic I've seen in my 60 years of practicing law. Professor, if he has not been charged with insurrection, is there something specific out of Colorado uh, that these folks, this crew organization, thinks is, is valid as to why they filed there? No, it's not only in Colorado. There are efforts in Florida. There are efforts in other states, and they will spread. I have no doubt that they will spread to New York and California and other, other Democratic places. The interesting thing is, it will also spread to purple states. It, it won't matter very much if Trump's disqualified in New York, California. You can't win those states anyway. But soon there will be efforts to disqualify him in purple states, which are up for grabs. And that would just undercut democracy completely. Can you imagine the framers of the 14th Amendment saying, you know who's going to decide who's the president of the United States? Not the people, not the Electoral College, but a group of secretaries of state, some of whom are elected, some of whom are appointed. It's an absurd amendment to the Constitution without going through the process. And you can't disqualify somebody from running without due process. Here, there's no process at all. If Adam Schiff thinks yeah. he can't run, then he can't run. That's yeah. not the way America runs its elections. Sure. Leave it to the voters. They can decide in the ballot box there. Uh, while we have you here, Professor, before we go, we, a very interesting survey we covered right here in National Report yesterday. We thought you might want to weigh in. Uh, Harvard University recently was named the worst college campus yep. for free speech. I'm sure you saw it. They even got the yep. worst score ever, a zero out of 100. Um, can you talk about that, obviously, with your background at Harvard? Um, what, One what of the best. Go ahead. The free well, I was there because I was fighting for free speech day and night. I defended communists, fascists. I defended uh, Yasser Arafat's right to uh, speak. Everybody's right to speak on college campus, even though I'm a liberal Democrat. But uh, I left 10 years ago, and a few other professors who were there fighting for free speech have left. Now it's up to a small group of people at Harvard, uh, a committee for academic freedom. Uh, Harvard is, is just terrible. They fired a dean because he represented somebody they didn't like. Uh, they have tried desperately to create a homogeneous uh, a community where nobody uh, speaks views opposed to those that are mainstream. Fortunately, there's this group of people headed by Janet Haley and, and, and Steven Pinker and a few others who have been fighting for academic freedom. I'm part of that group, but hard to imagine that Harvard needs a committee to fight for 
free speech and academic freedom. Harvard's motto should now be free speech for me, but not for thee, instead of veritas. Veritas means truth. Truth requires openness and debate and controversy in the marketplace of ideas. And Harvard is failing, failing that constitutional test. Diversity of thoughts and opinions. Those are so valuable. Definitely something uh, potential students should consider during the application process. Professor Alan Dershowitz, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome.